Hello world, so I am finally filming a Q&A video about Uva because so many of you guys have been asking me about accommodations and how it is to live in Amsterdam so I thought it'd be easier to just film a video and address all of the questions so let's get into it Okay, so there are a lot of questions about housing and how I found it. So right now I'm living in a student housing that I got through Uva. So basically how it all came to life was, um, I think it was either end of July or it was the beginning of August that we got an email from Uva saying that, oh, this is going to be the date that um, you can sign up for housing. And basically the way it worked, they send an email like a week or even two weeks before and you have a particular date where you can actually sign up for housing it's obviously not guaranteed that you're going to be offered a housing but you can still apply which is like you definitely should do that like no matter what because it's the best way to get housing and the easiest option out of all um and it should be cheaper in general so um yeah basically that day you wake up if if it's at 9 a.m. you're gonna be there at 9 a.m. you should not be later because so many people are trying to apply and just the quicker the better um, and then there's a cost for applying which the thing is I'm not entirely sure how much it was but it definitely was over 100 euros just to apply um, and obviously it was not guaranteed they were gonna get housing but um, yeah most places do require a payment to apply so you don't really have any other choice uh, and yeah I got the housing through Uva it's only one year uh, contract because I don't know that's just how it works after one year you have to move out and find a place on your own so that's about housing <laughs> Okay, so a lot of you guys have been asking me about my course, how I like it, what's the syllabus like, and basically I am doing my bachelor's in media and culture, and um, the course is honestly very diverse. We study a lot of different things because media is just such a broad topic. Um, the syllabus, okay, so basically. We have two blocks in each semester. So first semester, the classes that we had was living information and media aesthetics in living information it was just kind of theory in general we learned what is media what are the elements of media and how does everything work it was just very broad in general to give you an idea about what media is and etc and then media aesthetics was specifically a film analysis class sort of we learned to analyze films and wait i'm actually gonna show you the book that is required for the course here is the mandatory book that we had to get and the entire course we used this book um so yeah we learn how to analyze films for each week there's an assigned film and an assigned reading like a chapter from the book um and then we had a reading no we had an ass a written assignment which was basically a film analysis it was like 30 percent of our grade and then we had the final paper which was a 24-hour exam where we were given a bunch of like documentary trailers and um some advertisements that we had to analyze it was definitely very tough like media aesthetics is a pretty hard course but um you get through it and again the book is really nice and there are a lot of like analysis examples that you get so you can definitely get through it um then we had um block two which we had media transformation media and culture and transformation i think that's how the course was named um but it was all about the history of media all about the history of um, cameras and film and how everything came to life so it's a very content heavy class uh but honestly the course was extremely organized and definitely like doable uh, and yeah, we still had media aesthetics because media aesthetics was a 12 credit class, which was like would take up the entire semester. Semester two, um, we did block one and block one was media theory. Media theory was honestly a very, very hard course because there was just a lot of content that you had to know. There's no way to just like memorize everything because you truly deeply need to understand everything at its core. And there are a lot of like authors by authors i mean like philosophers and um they have to remember and the concepts that they came up with it's 
it was a very hard course to be honest but um got through it thankfully um and then we have what do we have we have media research now media research is a class that way too many people fail in their first year so you need to be very careful with that i'm still not over with the course i don't know how it's going to go but basically media research is a course where they um teach you how to do research basically you get to choose a topic that you like for instance i'm in fan studies class but there's like advertisement classes and monsters and monstrosity classes they're like a very wide range of classes that you can choose from um but i'm in fan studies and we are taught to write a research paper just to get you started on like thinking about how thesis is going to be in the last year so along with media research we have academic writing class where we learn how to write i guess um and it's supposed to improve your writing uh with the media research you're gonna have a final paper uh but no exams so yeah and now in block two we still are doing media research because it's 12 credits taking up the entire semester and block two we have current themes in media yet again you get to choose whatever class you like for instance i'm in race and graphic novels so for most of the class we analyze comics and graphic novels and how race is represented in them and the thing is each class in current themes has different um assignments do for instance my class has a video essay a presentation and a final paper but some some classes have a multiple choice and a final paper so, like most i feel like don't have a video essay but we do so it's very like complicated and it's very much based on the class that you choose uh and yeah that's about the syllabus well first year syllabus because um, i'm a first year student and i hope that helps <laughs> Okay, another question was asking reason behind choosing Uber. What are the cons of living alone in a different country that you never thought you have to experience? Okay, so reasons behind choosing Uba. So first of all, Netherlands is a very affordable country to study in compared to other European countries and I'm not gonna talk about US and Canada because they're just like over the top expensive. But uh, when it comes to European countries, yes, there are cheaper universities than UVA. However, they usually require you to know their native language. Like for instance, if you want to study in Germany, you should be fluent in German. There are a lot of like French universities where you have to like be fluent in French. Um, and it's very complicated, but in Netherlands, you get a affordable education in English, which is amazing uh, because I don't speak Dutch yet. And like I, I wanted to study in English. So, um, yeah, so that was the reason choosing Netherlands. When it comes to UVA, I mean, UVA is the best university in the Netherlands, especially for my course, Media and Culture. It's number one in the world. So there's no better place to study Media and Culture because it's number one in the world. And um, I like the fact that it's in Amsterdam because this is where a lot of things are happening in terms of media industry. And obviously that's the industry I want to work in. So I felt like I have to like, be in the midst of it all, in the chaos of it all. So that's the reason I chose Uva. The second part of the question was, what are the cons of living alone? Um, living alone is definitely not easy, especially if you move out from a country that's like completely different from Netherlands and Europe. And yeah, it's definitely take it definitely takes time to adapt to living alone like there are a lot of things you will have to learn but you also gain a lot of independence and you learn how to survive on your own pretty well but it's also just like gets lonely sometimes especially on your like national holidays when you're just like not celebrating and you're sitting in your room alone there's a lot that comes with living alone and studying abroad obviously like this is an amazing opportunity and like one of the best opportunities you could ever get but it does come with a cost. So yeah, you just, you have to get used to it. Uh, this is definitely not for everybody, but trying it out is worth the shot. So I, I think that's just my view on it. Okay, so another question was, is studying there easier or harder than you expected? Yes, I love your videos. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so uh, it's a very complicated question because I feel like this is just what I was expecting in general because I was very used to extreme workload because I graduated International Baccalaureate, which is like the most rigorous program in the entire world. Uh, and so I got very used to that. So actually when I came here, it was so much easier than IB. And it was like such a relief. I was like, 
at, at first I was like, am I doing something wrong? Like, why does it feel easier? But after you get so used to IB and all the torture that they put you through, this was easier. Obviously, it does get harder um, as the course goes on. Like, for instance, the first block of the first semester was very chill because they give you time to adapt to, you know, you just moved uh, to a completely new city. You're living alone. You need time to adapt. Uh, so it was easier. But again, as the progress is getting harder, like for instance, right now, block two of semester two is tough. There's a lot to do. But it's manageable because, and I've gotten used to it, but um, it, it definitely is hard to study here because it's a top uni after all. And, you know, you have to study like 40 weeks, 40 weeks, well, no, 40 hours a week by yourself while you have like, I don't know, 10 hours of class in the week or something of that sort. It's definitely hard, but if you got used to it during high school, if you did A-levels or IB, I feel like you'll be pretty used to it. Another question was, how diverse are the students there? Now, that's a very good question that I don't know how to answer. There are definitely a lot of internationals because I, I've i never been to a class where it's just Dutch people. And actually, if I go to class, they're rarely ever Dutch kids. They're usually European, East Asian, South Asian, West Asian. Um, so it definitely never feels alone because you're surrounded by so many international kids that you never feel out of place and you feel like uh, like I'm good like I not even about fitting in it's more of like oh cool like I'm good here like I don't you don't feel alienated because there's so many international kids here which is very nice and very comforting in general <laughs> one of you guys asked I'm thinking of going to study in Amsterdam any advice on university I actually don't know what a kind of advice I could give you but if you mean how to deal with university time management the most important just get ahead of your deadlines or at least be an amazing procrastinator who can finish an assignment the night before which i guess is case for most students and that's how we survive everything but um there's really no way to prepare for it you just have to embrace the uncertainty and go into it blindly <laughs> One of you guys asked, what is a typical schedule for a media and culture student? Okay, so I am in my block two semester two and I'm gonna tell you my schedule for now. Um, it's obviously more loaded up than what first semester was, but just to give you a general idea. On Mondays, I have a media research lecture from five to seven and Tuesdays are free. And then Wednesdays, I have a seminar for media, no, for current themes in media from 3 to 6 p.m. Thursdays, I have a media research seminar from 12 to 3. And then Fridays, I have a seminar for current themes in media from 3 to 6. That's it for the video. I really hope this was useful. If you have any more questions, you could always ask them in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them as good as possible. Thank you guys so much for watching. It genuinely means so much that you're supporting me on this channel. Um, so yeah, love you and see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.